Hi everyone, how is the Blender conference going? So, <laughs> so first of all, we want to say thanks to John and the Blender community for their interest in our proposal, despite its peculiarity regarding the, the main topics of the conference, and it's an honor to be here. So before we get started, we want to make a brief introduction that allows you to know our personal and professional career and contextualize the presentation. So, my name is Monica Sánchez, and I am here also in representation of my colleague Lorena Olazabal. And we are conservators and virtual heritage specialists uh, with a background in collection safe work and digitization of heritage uh, through the combination of traditional techniques and new technologies such as digital photogrammetry and 3D modeling uh, as a part of the conservation workflow. Lorena works at the National Museum, uh, sorry, at the National uh, School of Fine Arts in, in Peru, and her research field is uh, focused on contemporary uh, Republican and colonial uh, conservation. And uh, her work experience involved um, coordination of conservation projects. Um, about me, I work uh, at the University of Alicante in the southeast of Spain and from Madrid. And well, I started using Blender in 2014. And my research field is focused on wooden sculpture and uh, decorative arts conservation. And uh, my work experience has allowed me to participate in different conservation projects and digitization of uh, collections in national museums of Spain and the United Kingdom. And I work for the Wallace Collection in London where I could restore and virtually reconstruct part of the furniture collection. And now we both uh, collaborate with the University of Alicante as a part of a group called Patrimonio Virtual, which would be translated as Virtual Heritage. And we are a multidisciplinary team who has implemented new technologies in the conservation of heritage uh, projects in all its phases, from investigation, analysis, and documentation, and also to conservation, virtualization, and dissemination in many different platforms. So, <clears throat> Here you can see a little resume of uh, our tasks about investigation, analysis, conservation. And here um, in 2012, our colleagues were here presenting a Blender and virtual archaeology, the use of the Blender game engine to explore lost worlds, and today we're here to talk about virtual restoration. Despite the great difference that apparently exists between a 3D artist and a virtual heritage specialist, the reality is another. And that's because we, we all look for photorealism and not appeal. The, w the elements that we value are good materials, good modeling, uh, lighting, rendering. There are the, the elements that should match with proportions and forms, uh, color, intensity, and lighting in real world. So, <coughs> um, <coughs> digital imaging techniques have been used for more than a decade now to support conservation projects and we can see that in events like uh, DigiFest Scotland, which was two weeks ago, and the Virtual Heritage Network Island, where we hold the presentation, as you can see. The Blender at the, use, uh, at the service of virtual heritage conservation. And we, uh, we <coughs> know that mm, museums and organizations all over the world are using new technologies, innovative technologies, for the conservation uh, of their collections. And it's incredibly common to see that um, at the moment. So <coughs> here uh, we have uh, some pictures that show you how virtual, well, how restoration uh, is, um, works. And here you can see a treatment, a removal of past conservation treatments, okay, so you will understand the, the presentation. And here also the consolidation of polychrome surfaces. And here 
uh, we know that uh, <coughs> the, the main objectives of, of virtual restoration are complementarity, which means that in the, there are not treatments, uh, substitutive treatments of traditional skills. Complementarity means that we, they uh, give us more information, but not try to to replace traditional uh, treatments. Also, authenticity, uh, which means the no no protagonists uh, avoid the protagonism of the restoration by respecting the original, and historical rigor, which means a uh, solid base for about documentation and historical historical documentation, because every project needs to be um, needs uh, to be valued for for scientific area. So finally, we have the efficiency and transparency, which means that uh, we use less resources for more and better results and transparency because uh, every project uh, needs to the, has the need to be published so we can reach the society and share all the information. Um, <clears throat> a few years ago, there was some confusion between the terms virtual reconstruction and virtual restoration or virtual archaeology, but nowadays we speak of virtual archaeology or virtual restoration uh, as an auxiliary discipline that um, gives um, a large amount of information to the specialist. Uh, in addition to providing specific tools to restore without any impact on the original. In those pictures, you can see that a treatment in traditional restoration, you somehow uh, destruct uh, the, the object as you are touching the surface. So the, one of the benefits of virtual restoration is that uh, has no impact on the on the original, so it's very important. But actually, the term virtual has generated uh, some controversy and even doubts, as we identify virtual as the opposite of physical reality, and we can see that actually at the moment there's uh, some confusion with that, and as it seems that. Virtual restoration is not recognized as a position, a good position in in the profession. So, the <coughs> the main workflow of uh, virtual restoration uh, involves many different phases, but we are especially focusing on on the phases uh, carried out in Blender. <coughs> We use many softwares for different tasks, but as I just said, we're just going to say to see the the ones in Blender. So the first would be investigation studies, and it's about the documentation, about historic documentation, because we need that scientific um, support to generate more information. We try not to, to fall in the falls. So <coughs> it's one of the most important phases. The second one would be technical analysis and conservation. And this is also very important because in this one, we, can, we, know, we get to know the state of conservation of any object or any place or a structure. And that's because we use also um, techniques like uh, technical photography, like uh, UV photography. Also, we use some different techniques in the 3D uh, side, like digital photogrammetry. Uh, for example, by using a GISOT PhotoScan, which is the, the software we, we, we usually uh, work with. And <coughs> also would be laser scanner, but also it's more expensive. So we usually uh, work with photogrammetry. And the models generated in, in photogrammetry 
uh, give us a virtual replica, which will be restored, and the information we get is essential for, for the next uh, steps. So the third would be virtual treatments and the dissemination. Just a few notes about uh, the last, because a, a project always needs the, the dissemination. Uh, the information must be shared with uh, the society, but not only in congresses or, or something, also in uh, by scientific uh, publications, or maybe we talk about visualization techniques, like would be uh, virtual reality or augmented reality um, renders and those, but also uh, by training courses and everything we we can we can achieve. And focusing on virtual treatments, let's start with import decimation and retopology. This is related when uh, we have a photogrammetric model we get the information and the high resolution must be converted into a lower uh, resolution. And as I said, we, we, can, we can use different software, but in Blender we can, uh, we can work with um, different uh, modifiers like Decimate. And the result, uh, give us uh, much more information, and then we can work with them in different softwares like uh, game engines. And in the case, we don't have a photogrammetric model because maybe the original uh, is destroyed or maybe there's no accessibility to, to the object. Then we talk about virtual reconstruction. And this is a very interesting case because there was an altarpiece which was, which was dismantled and there was no accessibility, so photogrammetry failed. And here we had to reconstruct by measures and pictures and everything we can get from, from the investigation. We had to reconstruct the whole altarpiece, so this is a very good example of when we don't have the information for, from, from photogrammetric models. And then, this is also a reconstruction. This is a perfume burner from the Wallace collection, and we only had the, the photographs. So in the next uh, slide, you will see the whole piece. It was modeled uh, one by one, and the, the topology was very uh, important as as you see there are so many pieces and the the document the um, the object was too heavy so then we talk about the generation mapping in restoration as you can see in the in the picture um, we create like uh, two dimensions uh, mapping deterioration, and we used uh, software for vectorial drawing, but uh, in virtual uh, restoration, we combine the 3D uh, techniques, and this is very interesting because they give us much more uh, information about the state of conservation of any object. And here in the slide you see uh, the, the model of a wooden sculpture which was used for uh, 3D representation. So the, the model was imported to Blender and then we started creating the, the mapping deterioration which uses different colors to identify the pathologies. And here you see the UV map the model in texture paint and a final render at the bottom and <coughs> and the workflow of, of this uh, this phase and what uh, we can aff uh, afford this uh, this phase by using or the uv uv image editor 
we can directly paint on, on the sculpture or maybe make, we can uh, use different uh, software for image edition. And in this case, we directly use the UV map editor to, to represent uh, the alterations. Here would be a final render with all the views of the sculpture and all the pathologies represented in, in the small legend. And here is uh, how important is Blender for us at the moment in our workflow, because we can uh, complement uh, the traditional documentation and interventions with this kind of uh, treatments. So just talking about uh, the most important phases in, in virtual treatments, there are anastylosis, which would be the reordination of uh, the original pieces, which have been documented by maybe photogrammetry. And then we have selective cleaning that can be, uh, could be um, done in also software for image edition, volumetric reintegration, chromatic, and optimization. So starting with the selective cleaning, here you can see an ivory uh, object. And uh, in Photoshop or any software, we started to modify some parameters to get uh, a good quality and the colors that we are looking for, because the, the object was, uh, was very damaged and we had to reconstruct the, the colors of, of it. And here you can see a transition of the original and the result that would be the virtual restoration of, of this object and how it changes. The good thing about virtual restoration is that we can make hypotheses and we get effective solutions. In traditional restoration or material, we only have one chance to work on, in, on the object. So this is very helpful for us. Related to volumetric reintegration, here it's a picture very illustrative of how a sculpture uh, lost um, their, their fingers and we solved this, these problems with 3D modeling or digital sculpting. And here we have an example of another sculpture. As you can see, uh, there was a loss on the horn and by 3D modeling we get the, the replicate of, of it. Also it's interesting that we can um, use different materials as we would do in, in traditional restoration because <coughs> we can get a result very obvious. In restoration, we have to respect the principle and ethics that would be the minimum intervention. And in traditional and in virtual restoration, sorry, it's the same. We have to respect the ethics of uh, conservation, but the good thing is that we can make those hypotheses so we could just uh, recreate the, the object as it was made at in the moment it was made. And this is another, another treatment that is uh, very important in restoration, which is chromatic reintegration. And here we have an example of a polychromed sculpture. And after modeling the, the fingers, we, uh, over the 3D, the 3D model, which was documented by photogrammetry, we start uh, painting somehow the, <coughs> the fingers. So we got the, the UV editor and we can see how the mesh is distributed and how we use the, the texture pane for that. Also, we combine uh, the node editor to get uh, the realistic surfaces we are looking for. We are not just putting the colors 
because we need also mm, <coughs> specularity or any properties of, of materials. Here you can see the, the process more elaborated and almost the final one. We have to, to pay attention to, to the results. So here there's also another demonstration of how textures and colors are very important for, for the restoration, the final results. And the PBR materials are also used to get more realistic uh, results. And in relation to, to the optimization of the, the works and the objects, we talk about photorealistic rendering. And this is the, the one I showed you before, as you can see. And it's a, a good render to show how modeling is important and how texturing as well. And we know that uh, Blender is, was, and will be a, a powerful asset for, for virtual restoration. That's it. Mm -hmm.